beginner's yoga. We're going to go for about an hour today. Um, we're going to start off with some deep stretching, some yin yoga stretching. You may or may not want to use some yoga blocks. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you don't have yoga blocks, you can use pillows or you can use books. And you may or may not want to use a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, it's okay. You don't necessarily need one. You can use um, a towel, you know, uh, uh, just like a, a regular bath size towel. Or don't use anything because I'll give you modifications. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and begin. First, we're just going to lie on our backs. This position is called the resting yin pose. So you begin lying flat on your backs. Bring your knees to your chest. And you want to get your hips kind of square. Spine straight, shoulders square. And then one at a time, you let your feet touch the ground. And then one at a time, take your feet about mat width apart. And then gently let your knees fall toward each other. If we get this just right, there's no effort in your hips. You get a very deep release in your hips and in your low back. And you even get a release in your tummy. Your abs kind of soften. All of which is good. We want to soften this area up. Get some blood flow into what could be some tight and restricted areas. And we want to be able to breathe deeply down into our tummies. Now once you've established resting yin, we want to begin to breathe in and out through the nose. Once you begin the nasal breathing, see if you can bring your breath really down, down into, almost like into your bladder, or even further down to that, below that if you can. It takes a little bit of coordination, a tiny little bit of effort, but with practice, we can gradually get our breath deeper, 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 deeper into the torso. Automatically, it will start to slow down. We begin, we begin to have better gas exchange in the lower lobes of the lungs. We actually begin to take in more oxygen into the bloodstream. We actually can get more oxygen out of the blood and into our cells and into our tissues just by very simple breathing. Once you've established getting the breath down into your tummy, you try to breathe in a rhythm. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. whatever rhythm you can muster, that's even. Now, we're gonna hold here just for a little while longer. We've been here for a couple of minutes already. The goal is as less effort as possible, we'll put it that way. So try not to stress out over your breathing. Try not to stress out over relaxing your legs, right? Just 
be calm. Just be calm. Be cool and be collected. Now the next stretch, we gently kind of toe heel our feet towards each other. And I've got a couple of yoga blocks here just in case. I may or may not need them. But once my ankles touch, once your ankles touch, let your knees gently fall out to the sides. Real easy. It's called the butterfly. And even if you have pretty mobile hips, like I've got pretty good, this is called abduction, when you abduct, um, you move away from your body. So I've got pretty good abduction of the hips. But I'm still going to put a yoga block under my thighs just to take some of that pressure off the, the inner groin here. Just a light, gentle tug is sufficient. If we put it on a scale from 0 to 10, 0 being no resistance at all, 10 being so much resistance that you grind your teeth. I want to feel like about a 2 or a 3. Just enough resistance that you, you understand that you're abducting. It's abducting. But not so much that you're stressing. Not so much that um, you can't continue to breathe slowly, evenly, rhythmically. And again, we'll hold for a, a couple of minutes. The general rule of thumb is when you do passive stretching, this right now is passive stretching, 100%. You, gently, you, you generally, I beg your pardon, you generally want to hold the positions longer. And because it's passive and because it's gentle, you can tolerate it. <clears throat> and that slowly increases the blood flow. It slowly starts to release um, tight tissues. In this case, it's more of the inner thigh. When we were doing resting yin, it was more of the outer thigh. Hopefully, we'll be getting some moisture and some relief the inner and outer thighs so that when we do some of the deeper stretches we start to doing the yoga poses and whatnot they'll be easier so let's hang out here for about one more minute Just breathe down deep into your bladder, in and out through your nose, and just very soft rhythm. Good. Now gently use your hands and just gently bring your knees into uh, you know, middle position, we'll call it that. And I'm going to move the yoga blocks off to the side and we're going to get into what's called leg stretch number one. So we have modifications here and whatnot. We can leave the left knee bent, that's okay. It's the right leg we want to focus on. It's keeping your right knee bent. See if you can grab onto your right knee with both hands. This is probably the most modified version of this stretch. And really, we're just trying to get into the hamstrings here. We're stretching out the hamstrings, the glutes, and the low back. Hold here and breathe here. This is completely fine, totally normal. It's a um, totally valid way of getting a little bit deeper into the backside of the hip. 
if you want to, if you want to uh, go deeper, you gradually start to straighten your right leg. You just hold on to your thigh and hold on to your hamstrings and you slowly start to straighten your right leg. Now at some point, your leg will stop moving and that's okay. Stop there. You'll feel some resistance in your hamstrings. You don't have to completely straighten your leg. It's all good. Just hang out and breathe. The breathing will help loosen up the muscles. Now, if you want to go further, if you can tolerate it, maybe you grab on to your big toe and you straighten your knee this way. If you can't grab onto your big toe, that's where the strap comes in. If you don't have a strap, that's where the towel comes in. If you don't have any of that stuff, it's okay. Just keep your knee bent, hold, and breathe. Now, if you're using a towel or a strap, let the towel and the strap do the work. So in other words, my arm is on the yoga mat. My triceps are on the yoga mat. My elbow's bent. And my hand just kind of hooks on to the uh, towel. I'm not, I don't have my hand up really high and trying to pull and tug hard on, on, the, on the strap or the towel. My hand's just kind of holding it in place. It's acting like a little, a little ballast. And we're just holding and breathing. And remember the scale, right? So zero to 10, this stretch should feel like a two or a three. If you pull too tight, too soon, too much, you'll just stay tight forever. You, you will never ever get the flexibility you're craving because you're sending these signals to your brain. Your brain receives a signal that says resist at all costs. If you're calm, relaxed, and just chill out, your brain doesn't get that signal. And so you kind of trick your way into becoming more and more flexible. It just takes time. Now from this position, same leg, we're going to go to leg stretch number two. So leg stretch number two, if you have your knee bent, which is fine, you just open your hip to the right. You drop your knee to the right. If your leg is slightly extended, do the same thing. If you can grab your big toe, do the same thing. If you have the yoga strap or the yoga towel, bath towel, do the same thing. You just gradually, gently open the hip to the side, trying to keep your hips square, right? So really pay attention to that left glute. Don't let that left glute peel up off the ground. That's coming up a little later. Here, you're just trying to, again, we're getting into that um, inner thigh, but we're also getting into the hamstrings here. Steady breathing. Easy breathing. Remember, you can always go backwards also. If this is too much, you can come back, bend your knee, etc. Speaking of which, let's bend our knee, stay with this leg, and now we do eye of the needle. Cross your ankle over your thigh bone. The same thing here. Get a feel for the stretch first. If you can tolerate this, stay here, breathe here. If you need more, gently wrap your hands under your left leg and gently start to pull both of your knees towards your chest. But you got to go real gently, real slowly here. And this is going to stretch the back side of the hips again. This is a little bit more about internal and external rotation. Remember your breathing. Remember the rhythm, the depth of the breathing. 
If the breathing is becoming challenged, it's because you're going too far into the stretches, you're stressing yourself out. And it just starts a chain reaction of negative side effects. So find the that weak link of your chain and make sure it's calm, cool, collected, and the rest of the chain will, will strengthen. Good. Now both feet to the ground and let's repeat that on the opposite side so right knee stays up left knee comes to your chest however you treated the other side treat this side the same way or at least try to that's a good point if one side is significantly stiffer than the other you're gonna have to treat both sides differently make a note of it and then um, you'll know next time pay a little bit of extra attention to the stiffer side steady breathing in leg stretch number one if you're observing you may notice I keep my hand on my kneecap so my right hand is on my left kneecap. That's to ensure that my left leg is straight. For me, particularly, I, I get stiff hamstrings and my knee tends to flex a little bit. Now I can tolerate it, so I hold my knee straight. If you cannot tolerate it, please don't use this technique. It's just a little insider trick to help you get deeper in the hamstrings if you can tolerate it. One more inhale. Exhale. Let's switch stretches. Now I'm out of room here. I'm going to bump into the backdrop. So I keep my left knee bent and I'm going to open my left knee to the side. I'm getting the same stretch as I did with the right leg. It's just that my knee is bent. It's, it's all good. Make sure your right glute stays glued to the ground, more or less. Don't roll so far over to the left. Let's come back to the center. Let's do eye of the needle. We'll put the left ankle over the right thigh and hang out for a second first. See how you respond here. If you're good here, stay here. If you need a little bit more, gently bring your hands, wrap them around your hamstrings here and gently bring both knees towards your chest. Just go easy. If you're watching, you see I keep wiggling my left foot. It's because you want to keep your left foot awake. Keep your left foot active. That will protect your ankle, your knee, and your hip. And then bring both feet down. 